giorni saranno vuoti senza te cosa fare ma che fare I don't think that concrete is in the blood it's thicker than blood and in the right hands it can be a real work of art Il cavallo di queste dimensioni, 8 metri d'altezza, avrà un peso, non so, di 7-8 tonnellate adesso. È fatto di una struttura metallica, ci ho buttato dentro stracci, eh, ho riciclato rottami vari, vecchie sedie, poltrone, pellicce. C'è anche una grossa pelle di canguro lì dentro. Cosa pazzesca, eravamo in ufficio, ma si era un po' rovinata. E poi, naturalmente, con una rete metallica, quando la forma più o meno era vicino, con le metalli spruzzare il cemento, speciale cemento, e io nel, nel, nell'impalcatura ero lì sopra, lì a vedere come veniva fuori, e poi l'abbiamo spruzzato il cemento, una cosa magnifica, ecco che molto bello. Qui in Australia forse questo qui è una specie di simbolo di questi cavalli generosi che lottano e corrono e magari sono stanchi, si accostano per un po' e poi riprendono la corsa. Ecco un po' anche la, la, la mia, il mio destino di questo paese, arrivare, correre, pigliare respiro e riprendere la corsa. A 85 anni ne ho fatto di strada. di avere una bella casa. Ecco il sogno dell'italiano, di avere una bella casa. Sei tu lo splendore dei sogni miei che vive in me. Sei proprio tu, anima mia, che sento in me, che voglio avere accanto a me, vicino a me, solo per me. Amor, 
I think that we've changed architecturally the face of Sydney because there's such nice columns and nice, well, the product, uh, especially when you start putting them in the right type of a house. I mean, mind you, the Europeans, you know, they, they tried to do their best, you know, with whatever they had, you know, they just wanted to recreate a little bit of what they were used to, or perhaps they just wanted to do their little castle, you know, with their little columns. By putting this little column, it will make the house their palace. Te amo, te amo, sai. It's a dream of all Australians, bricks and mortar. But for Italians, it became so much better because of their uh, skills in the trades. They could buy the house, they could fix it up, you know, they could add value to it, they could sell it and move on and do it again. <laughs> For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. And someone else is building on it, but each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 9 to 11. You can go to my grandfather, he was a fisherman, but he could lay concrete. He could lay concrete, he could do tiles. He was a perfectionist and everything he had to do, he learned, if he didn't know, if he couldn't, if he didn't understand it, he'd go out and ask questions, learn about it and come back. And when they do that, they'll come back and if it's not right the first time, they'll do it the second time and it'll be right. And then after that, as they're progressing in their skill, they learn to, to perfect that skill. It's not like uh, uh, close enough is good enough. It had to be perfect. <laughs> Using concrete, the ancient Romans built about 8,500 kilometers of roads, Roman baths, the Colosseum, and the Pantheon. The most famous ancient use of concrete in one of the most historically and architecturally significant buildings of the ancient world. One story goes that to build the dome, they packed the inside with dirt right up to the roof, carefully molding the roof in dirt before directly pouring the concrete onto it. Now this is where the real Italian ingenuity comes into play. To get the dirt out, the builders announced that buried in it were gold coins. So what happens? Every Roman turns up and starts shoveling and digging the dirt out for free. And there you have it, the birth of the first clever developer. important for as Italian community as a whole. I mean, as we know, the migration from Italy started very early, even before First World War, and we had a few migrants here. In Leichhardt and this area here, the Inner West is one type of uh, community, and they came out here. To me, they came out with, uh, with virtually nothing with just a suitcase, everyone will tell you the same story. They come out with a suitcase. So when they're coming out here, they're struggling, uh, uh, taking on family that's back home or bringing a family over with them. Outside of Italy, this has never been created. Nowhere in the world this has been created. As you're walking through, you'll see the Milano end of the building, which gives you that, that presence of being in an Italian centre. And as the street signs point out, you can see that it isn't, you, you're in the Florence building. Uh, New York's got a little Italy, San Francisco's got a little Italy, but that's a, a strip shopping. This is a true replica from Italy to say here, this is little Italy. Being a replica with, with style and a village atmosphere with the apartments, the shopping, 
Um, we're going through the Naples building at the moment. We have our florist, our perfumery. And then when you get through to the end here, this is Palermo, and you have the Milano section that looks into the Piazza, the Milano section looks over the city. Are you, are you going to encourage the, the kind of Italian thing where it's going to be quite chaotic with the, uh, with the, the, the clothing hanging over the, the No, the clothing, no. That, that side of it, the clothing, we, we, we do encourage the plants, putting out pots, plants, um, uh, different seasons, different plants, yes, we encourage that. But having the, um, the actual clothing, no. The whole centre is not to be a gimmick. It is a, a true village. Atmosphere with style, the Italian style and finishing. This is the, the Rome now. We're coming from Milan to Rome, and this changes the look again. What we had in the Milan it was a colonnade effect of narrow shot fronts, similar shot fronts all throughout, but again, the look of the walkways change. This is a, a grand espionage type look, where there's more of a narrower colonnade look. Oh, we, we try to be diplomatic, so we pick two from the north, which is your Milan and Florence. Rome is in the middle, and you got two from the south, which is your... Um, which is your Naples and Palermo.